Now that we've got a successful import statement for the FS module, we can make use of that to actually read the contents of our football.csv file. So underneath the import statement, I'll add in const matches is going to be fs.read file sync, like so. Now the first argument here is going to be the name of the file we want to open, which is football.csv. And then the second argument is going to be an options object. Inside this object, we're going to add in a flag of encoding and set it to utf-8. So quick aside here on what this flag does. With the read file sync method, we can read any type of file. So an image, an executable, a JSON file, or a CSV. By adding on encoding utf-8, we are telling read file sync about what type of content we expect to find inside of football.csv. This is saying we expect there to be text content in there encoded with UTF-8. So by adding on this encoding flag, we are essentially telling FS read file sync to return a string to us. If we did not add on that encoding flag, it would instead give us back something called a buffer with the raw data out of that file, which is not what we want in this case. We just want a string representing the contents of the CSV file. So now matches should be a string that contains all the different match data out of our CSV. To make sure that's the case, I'll add in a quick console log, matches like so. Then I'll flip on over to my terminal, and I should see all my match data appear. Okay, so this looks good, but having all this data in one single gigantic string is not super useful. We're going to eventually want to be able to iterate over all the different matches and run some sort of analysis. So I think that we need to somehow parse the information in this big string into some more usable data structure. So let's take a look at a diagram to understand how we're going to parse all this stuff. All right, so here's the idea. Right now, we've got one big string that contains all the different matches. In this diagram, I'm only showing two of the rows in there. In reality, we have many more rows, of course. So to get this in a more usable data structure, I'm going to first call split with a new line character on that string. Just so you know that backslash n inside of a string represents a new line character. And it essentially says, OK, take all these different rows and parse them or split them into an array of strings, where each inner string right here represents one single match. Then after we do that, still working with a array of strings where each string represents one match is not super useful. So we'll do one more step inside of here to parse this. We'll do a map operation where we will map over each individual string, and we will split on the comma inside there. So comma there, comma there, comma there, and so on. And so we're going to eventually end up with a two-dimensional array of strings, where each inner array has first the date as a string, then the home team as a string, then the away team as a string, and so on. So that's how we're going to parse this into a more usable data structure. All right, so I'm going to flip back over to my editor. I'm going to find the closing semicolon or the ending semicolon on read file sync. I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to chain on a dot split statement like so. So I'm going to split by new line. I'll do a quick save. I'll go back over to my terminal. And now I should see that I have an array of strings where each string represents one match. So now we can map over this array, and for each string, we'll split on comma. Okay, so I'm going to remove that semicolon again. I'll do a map, and for every row that I expect to be a string, we are going to return a string. And so I'm going to get on both those annotations. So then inside the mapping statement, I will return row.split on comma like so. Oops, my typo right here. I said that we were going to return a string. I meant to say that we were going to return an array of strings like so. All right, so let's save this again. I'll flip on over to my terminal once more. And there we go. This is looking better. So now we have an array of arrays. Each inner array represents one single match. And inside each of those inner arrays, we have the date, home team, away team, and so on. Now you will notice that the home team goals and away team goals are numbers inside of strings. If we wanted to somehow do some arithmetic on these strings right here, well, we would somehow have to convert that into an actual number. We'll probably do that at some point, but for right now, I think this will work out just fine. All right, let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back to the next video, we're going to start to add in a little bit more code, 
to actually run an analysis on this data and then generate some kind of report. So I'll see you in just a minute.